verses 1 through 17. When you have it, my dear sister, go ahead and read it. And God spake all these words, saying, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Or any likeness of anything that's in the heaven above. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. Or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Nor serve them. Nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the third, unto the third and fourth generation. Visiting the iniquities of fathers of the third and fourth generation. Of them that hate me. Of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. And keep my commandments. And keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take it his name in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh the name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor six and do all thy work. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, thou, nor thy son, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. The sea. The sea. And all that in them is. And all that in them is. And rested the seventh day. And rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. And hallowed it. And hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant. Nor his manservant. Nor his maidservant. Nor his maidservant. Nor his ox. Nor his ox. Nor his ass. Nor his ass. Nor anything that is thy neighbor. Nor anything that is thy neighbor. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the twelfth chapter. We're going to read along in, in, with her in silence as she reads verses uh, 14, 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 and 14. What does it say, my sister? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Yes. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, mm. whether it be good or whether it be evil. We're going to Revelations 22. Last book, last chapter, verses 14 and 15. When you have it, my sister, 
Go ahead and read it. We're going to read along in silence. Go ahead and read. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Mm -hmm. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever love it and make it a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are online, those who are in the house, this is the key to salvation. If you want salvation, you keep his commandments. I'm letting you know that this is the way that God has put place for us so we can receive salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you when you praise you, Lord God. We thank you for you being the God that you are. God, you're awesome. Now, God, as we come before you, even on this Sabbath day, we are keeping your commandments, Lord God. Sup with us that we may be able to learn from you even the more. And Lord God, everyone that is listening, Lord God, everyone that is in the house, Lord God, Lord God, overshadow them with your grace so they might be able to know that you are God and God alone. Lord God, we thank you for it and we praise you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. All right. I'm, I, I got a song that is on my heart. I got a song that's on my heart, and uh, I want to go ahead and, and sing a little bit. Uh, somebody told me, well, you shouldn't sing. Well, you know, I'm going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that just because I know that I I can do this and make the noise unto the Lord. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Brother Marlon, where you at? I'm going to go ahead and sing it. Yes.
in my heart and I wanted to go ahead and let everybody know don't be discouraged God is going to show up know that he is nigh if you would can you arm yourself with your Bibles arm yourself with your Bibles please and we're going to John the 11th chapter It's healing for your soul. And I want to go ahead and just uh, let everybody know this lesson right here. Go ahead and share this with someone. This is going to bless them lo uh, long after this day. John, the 11th chapter, and we're going to read verses 11 through 15. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read it, and I want everybody to read along in silence as I read aloud. I'm reading John, the 11th chapter, verses 11 through 15, and this is what the word of the Lord says. These things said he, and after that he said it unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciple, Lord, if he sleep, how shall we, uh, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of taking a rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Verse 15, I am glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Yes. He said, I am glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Right. Yes. I want to go ahead and uh, preach for a few minutes, and I want you all to be praying with me on this, because this is something that has really been on my heart. I've really been working on this, and I had a whole lot of painstaking time to go ahead and put this lesson together. Let me, I'm going to let you all know something, that God is really working with me as far as putting together lessons that are going to resonate even with you today. Yeah. So I want you to just look at your neighbors. If you are at home, go ahead and push your, your coffee table aside and just go ahead and grab your neighbor. If you touch your, your neighbor, if you're riding in the car and everything, and say, I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm glad it didn't work out. Mm. Say that one more time. I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm glad it didn't work out. <laughs> 
my dear friends, I'm amazed at the startling statistics that would give us the data to know that in Wyandotte County, that's in Kansas, the highest, most attended summer school class is English. Yeah, it's English. And uh, uh, the participants, by and large, are individuals that claim English as their native language. Yes, 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 I agree. Perplexed as to know uh, uh, why this is going on, I asked a local educator as to what was going on, and she bristled and explained, saying, Dr. Smith, I came down to the basic facts that Many students absolutely cannot figure out the difference between a simple verb and a progressive verb. Okay. Wow. Okay. So a simple verb, like it works. A progressive verb is like it, it is working. Yes, with the I. They can't figure out the difference. Yes. Uh -huh. so, uh, 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 so, so to be critical, uh, for those of you that are enrolled in the classroom of life, uh, uh -huh. to know the difference between it, it's not working and it don't work. There's differences. Yes, yes. come on and be clear. Be clear. If something is not working, it's broken. All right. It is not effective. Here it is right now. Come on. When something and and which makes it a temporary solution uh, situation. It's a temporary situation. It's broken. It, it can be fixed. It can be repaired. Yes. Okay. For example, if you go to a trainer, he or she gives you an, an eating regimen, and after three days you declare that you have not lost any weight, you come back with the knee-jerk reaction and says, it's not working. Uh -huh. Critical pause is that it's not working. Here it is yet. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Right. It just means that you need more time. If while you're in church today or uh, you online, uh, and, and guess what? Guess what? How about this? If you're in church right now, and I'm talking about you, Sister Claudette, or uh, are you and Carolyn, and, and guess what? And, and your grandchildren are left at home, mm -hmm. and they're running around in the front room, and they and, and they, they knock the flat screen TV off the wall. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm bringing it right home to you, okay? Uh, if they uh, if they were to do that and knock the flex screen off the wall, and guess what? It breaks into a million pieces. In that case, it no longer works. That's right. Oh, so you have to understand. It's not working, it's temporary. Uh -huh. But it doesn't work, it's permanent. Oh my goodness, that's true. The Bible declares, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh -huh. Does not mean that it's temporary. It means that whatever comes to you, whether it is here in July or even in September, it will not work. Some stuff, some stuff doesn't work and some stuff just isn't working come on. for some of the stuff that simply does not work you should be glad uh -huh. you should be glad to know that uh some relationships are for a season others are for a reason and others are for a lifetime Right. You should have to you have to remind yourself that all things work together for the good of them that love him and that are called according to his purpose. But unfortunately, far too many people never emotionally recover 
from a relationship that, here it is, didn't work. Mm -hmm. Or a place of employment that didn't work. Mm -hmm. You have to take the blinders off to see that it may have been a blessing, here it is, in disguise. Mm -hmm. Immature believers can only give God glory for what they have right now. Those are immature believers. But when you walk with God, here it is, when you walk with God for a while, ain't curling, you ought to have the maturity to know that every now and again, you ought to thank God for the stuff that didn't work out in your life. Would you do me a favor? Would you all give the enemy a black eye right now? Uh, and, and give God glory for here it is. Watch this uh, for for uh, who do you, uh, who you not with no more? All right. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm telling you, the person that you not with anymore. Give God glory for them not being in your life anymore. Hmm. Would you hear this holler for that job that you are not employed by anymore? Here it is. Who is not in your life anymore? Some stuff you ought to be glad it didn't work out. <laughs> in the year 1919, the year 1919, Walt Disney, he was fired from the Kansas City Star newspaper. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right here in Kansas City. According to this editor, he wasn't creative enough. He lacked imagination. Wow. He had no good ideas, ain't Curly? My goodness. The problem was that he wasn't, the problem was that he wasn't creative enough for them. Just think, if he would have just stayed on that job, the world would not have known about Mickey Mouse. Or Minnie. Goofy would just be a figment of his imagination and not a childhood staple. There would be no Disney World, no Disneyland, no Disney Channel or movies. Come on. My God. You got to thank God that he got fired. I'm so glad he <laughs> Sometimes you got to thank God for the stuff you thought was a calamity. Mm -hmm. But true. God just made it an opportunity for you. Right. Uh, nah, you you had to not gone through it. You would not uh you would not be where you are. Here it is right now. Right now. Marlon in the nineteen eighties. Mark Cuban. Fresh out of college. He was working as a cashier at Arby's. And he had his mind on computers. But he, in fact, had to have a job to support himself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. One day, he was late opening up the food chain because he was courting an investor. Mm -hmm. All right. They fired him immediately. Arby's did. And from that day, he made a covenant with himself that he would never work for anyone else today. EGW, today he is worth $2.8 Wow. Yes. That's so true. And it might not have happened if he would have, have never been fired. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. I know y'all don't know this to, to be exciting, but I'm going to tell you who should be excited. Every entrepreneur that is in here. If you're an entrepreneur, just go ahead and lift your hands up. If you're at home, just go ahead and lift your hands up. I'm going to go ahead and show, share with you something about your entrepreneurship. Here it is. Uh, you, you, you have that line of product in mind, that building in 
mind. That, uh, that ideal, that concept, every dream, every nonprofit. Yes. Here it is, that book. God gave, God gave it to you. Now you got to give God glory for it. It is the property. Yes. Whatever God has uh, has placed, he has placed it in your spirit and he is pushing you closer. Here it is yes. to it. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Got to do it. Got to do it. Thank got you, to God. Do it. Pushing me, God. You're pushing me. I know God's pushing me. I know. Mm. In the city of Baltimore. All right. The local television station producer told a reporter that she was unfit for television. Oh, mm -hmm. They told her that she was too dark and she weighed too much. They took her off the nightly anchoring spot, thinking that she would fail. Mm -hmm. That journalist's first name is Oprah. See? Come on now. Mm -hmm. They thought that they was downgrading her. Uh -huh. But they had no idea that it was preparing her. There you go. Woo, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. They meant it for evil. Uh -huh. But God was working it out. Here it is for her good. That is so true. My God. No, you can't handle it. But you would stand on your feet if you would push that coffee table aside. Yes. You got to go ahead and just tell your haters. Mm -hmm. You're going to hate, but you just got to thank God because God didn't intend for you for that situation to work out. Mm. So in this lesson, we'll explore that the law that didn't work out paid the way for the royal law. Yes. Mm. To be adhered. And I, I want to go ahead and get right to the scripts on this. See, the, we're going to compare the law to the law. All right. Yeah, we're going to see this thing happen right before our eyes. I'm glad it didn't work out. We're going to compare it. So glad to have Aunt Carolyn with me. Oh, yeah. We're going to go ahead and go right into the scriptures. We're going to the 19th chapter of, of Exodus. The 19th chapter of Exodus. And I know that you have your Bibles. Please have your pen and paper with you. These notes are going to help you far longer than this day. Oh, yeah. I believe it. I'm glad it didn't work out, Dr. Ward. I'm glad it didn't work out. Exodus 19. And we're going to pick it up on the one. What does it say, my sister? In the third month, mm -hmm. when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. the same day came they into mm -hmm. the wilderness of Sinai. Yes. Go ahead. For they were departed from Rephidim. Yes, they were. And were come to the desert of Sinai. Yes. And had pitched in the wilderness. Yes. And there Israel camped before the mount. Mm -hmm. So Israel is camping before the mount. And Moses went up unto God. Yes. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountains. What did he say? Thus shall they, thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob. Uh-huh. And tell the children of Israel. Now look here. Now God has everybody coming to the mount. He's talking to Israel. They're going to have to clean themselves up, sanctify themselves. Because one thing I can tell you about the Lord, he ain't going to be around anything that ain't clean. That's it. Uh, keep on reading, my sister. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Yes. And how I bear you on eagle's wings. And did what? And brought you unto myself. Verse 5. Now. Therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed mm -hmm. and keep my covenant, yes, 
then ye shall be a peculiar treasure uh -huh. to me above all people uh -huh. for all the earth is mine so all the earth is the lord's but he put he used a particular people yes skip on down to verse eight and all the people answered together and said yes all that the lord hath, hath spoken we will do see look here there is a relationship that has been made right here right. all that the lord had spoken right. we will do this is what baptism is all about ladies and gentlemen uh -huh. yes. you know what a lot of people want to say well you you having all your old sins down in the water and now you're coming up brand new i, I can agree with that but you are also coming in agreement not just an agreement that is light you are coming in a blood covenant that water represents the blood yes. and you went down in that water yes. and you said all that the lord say i would do and obey yes. don't take it lightly ladies and gentlemen that baptism means something, yes. means something. go ahead and read and Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Yes. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. No, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. Yes. That the people may hear uh -huh. when I speak with thee. Now look here. He didn't say that he was going to come and have everybody see what he looks like. That's the right. Bible said that he came in a thick cloud. Yes. yes. Come on. So he's coming in a thick cloud. So why do we have all these preachers wanting to wear a cross around their neck to say that they are of Christ? He said, I didn't want to have any sin too. You ain't going to see no cross around. Here it is. Oh, here it is. My Hebrew brothers, they want to go ahead and wear what they call the Star of David. Uh, there was this one runner, uh, Edomite. I don't call them what they are. Uh, 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 the seed of Edom, or what we call the seed of Esau, uh -huh. who called himself a Jew. They are Jewish. Uh -huh. uh -huh. he, he, he wanted to go ahead and sit down and, and talk book with me. You know, I love kicking book. All right. All right. And I said, well, you believe in the Torah, right? He said, yeah, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible, right? The Pentateuch. Okay? So, uh, you, you got this star around your neck uh -huh. my question is david wasn't mentioned there All right. in the pentateuch in All right. the torah so how did you come to know this star is to be from david okay. All right. he couldn't answer my question I no more we know what that star is this is star rim frim the star Molech. Here it is. The sun god. Why right. well, it look like a sun? Come on. It ain't nothing. <laughs> ain't no secret about it. Mm -hmm. Come on, Prince Patrick. Go ahead and read. And believe thee forever. Mm -hmm. And Moses told the words of the people unto uh, the Lord. Yes. And the Lord said unto Moses, What did he say? Go unto the people and sanctify them uh -huh. today and tomorrow. Uh -huh. And let them wash their clothes. They gotta wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day. Uh -huh. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all people See, uh -huh. on Mount Sinai. So he ain't want you to be nasty. No. Uh-huh. Skip on down to verse 17. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. Yes. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. Yes. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a slope. Why? Because the Lord descended uh, uh -huh. on it in fire. Yes, he did. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. Uh huh. And the whole mount quaked. Now, did, did they see God? No, they seen the fire and the smoke. All the pomp and circumstance. Let me let you know something. Anybody who said that God just spoke to me, I'm looking at them, looking at them like a bewilderment. Because you know what? 
after I've seen all this that's going on here in Exodus, all the, the stuff that's going on here in Exodus, guess what? I found out that when God shows up, he shows up. Yes. He don't sit there and just show up and be halfway with it. When he shows up, he shows up. Yes. Go ahead and read, my sister. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long yes. and waxed louder and louder, yes. Moses spake. Yes. And God answered him by a voice. Yes, he did. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. Uh-huh. On the top of the mount. Uh-huh. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount. And what did Moses do? Moses went up. Verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh-huh. Go down, charge the people. Lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, uh -huh. and many of them perish. Look here, he wanted him to he, he wanted to sanctify them, to set them apart. Yeah. Okay, he then he tells the children of Israel uh, that he didn't want no signature. to. Did they see the image of God? No, no, I didn't see no image of God. No. God wants us to fear Him. Yes, therefore we will obey Him. It's an easy concept. Yes. Why don't you speed down prospect? Because it's of the wrong. fear of that police officer yes. sitting right there on the corner who's going to clock you with his with his uh with a speed speedometer. Yes. That's fear. Therefore, you're going to obey what is the posted speed limit. That's right. Now let's go ahead and see what the Lord had to say. All right. He said something. He said something to all of the children of Israel. In fact, the way that he said it, it should be so ingrained in you because we say this every Sabbath day. All right. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we already read it once, but I'm going to read it again. Let's go to Exodus 20. Yes, yeah. Exodus 20. And we're going to pick it up on the one. Exodus 20. Pick it on one. Brother Anthony, so good to see you, brother. Amen. Brother Anthony is in the house. Amen. Exodus 20, pick it up on verse 1. What does it say? And God spake all these words, saying, What did he say? I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, yes. out of the house of bondage. Yes. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not take, make unto me unto thee any graven image. Yes. Or any likeness of anything uh -huh. that is in heaven above. Yes. Or that is in earth beneath. Yes. Or that is in the water under the earth. Did you all see what just happened when he went on and came down and the fire and the smoke was around? There was no image of him to be seen. God knows what kind of people he's dealing with. He's dealing with some of the greatest artists in the world. The greatest engineers in yes. the world. Yes. Yes. See, I, I, I took a, I did a survey, and it was more than a survey. It was a statistic I was reading on. See, uh, uh, Israel has always been the one to take imagination to the next level. Oh yes. Whereas a Gentile. Otherwise known as see the JFED, otherwise known as uh, Europeans, they all have the mind of war. Why not? What I mean by that, Israel don't have any no want to make a weapon of mass destruction. Right. right. What we want to do is we want to make an air conditioner. What else do we want to do? Oh, we want to look nice. We want to go ahead and make an iron in the pressing cone. Yes. Yeah. That's what Israel do. Israel don't want to kill anybody. If you notice, all of the mass shooting that happens happened to be Gentile. The only reason why an Israelite will kill another, it's because they mess with them. Fear for their own life. That's it. Right, right. January 6th. January 6th. 
you couldn't find us there if you were tried to pay somebody. The only reason why you probably seen some sprinkles of somebody up there is because they was just trying to follow the crowd. But if we had been up there in numbers, there would not have been a situation where they were hunting down the people from the FBI. They would actually be calling the morgue and say, we have an overflow. Uh-huh. Right, right. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, uh -huh. nor serve them. Uh -huh. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Yes. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation uh -huh. of them that hate me. Uh -huh. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that, that do what? love me. Uh -huh. And keep my commandments. And keep my commandments. Let me let you all know something. You keep these commandments, you can go ahead and declare it to everybody. I'm so glad it didn't work out. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and read. Thou, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Uh huh. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Yes. Remember the Sabbath. Day. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. I had a Gentile to come up to me and tell me that oh God uh, that Jesus went on and put the Sabbath day on the cross and nailed it to the cross. Let wow. me go ahead and let you know something. He, how would he do that if the Sabbath day points to when he returns? Is See? Jesus here? No, no. Wow. He said that just like those that were in Egypt, uh, coming from Egypt in the wilderness, they will not enter into my rest. I don't want you to be like them. What is his rest? The day of rest. The thousand years right. that he is going to rule on, on this world. Come on and preach to the world. Right. So how could he put the Sabbath day on the cross? I'm telling you, you got to find out. We're going to find out what he put on that cross. And then you're going to be like, I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm glad it didn't work out. Go ahead and read, my sister. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. Yeah. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Yes. Thy God. Uh-huh. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son. Thou nor thy son. Nor thy daughter. Nor thy daughter. Thy manservant. Thy manservant. Nor thy maidservant. Yeah. Nor thy cattle. Uh-huh. Nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. Keep on. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Yes. The sea uh -huh. and all that in them is. Yes. And rested the seventh day. Uh-huh. What else did he say? Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. Uh-huh. And hallowed it. So what else he tell you to do for your parents? Read. Honor thy father and thy mother. Uh-huh. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Let me break this thing down here. I get so weary for my Hebrew brothers and sisters that come up to me and say, well, uh, we ought not to celebrate Mother's Day and wow. Father's Day. Ain't that honoring your father? Yeah. Ain't that honoring your mother? Yes. I know that they got a particular day for it. That should encourage them to continue on to yes. right. honor their mother and their father. Yes. Why do you want to go ahead and discredit that? That's crazy. Well, you know the etymology of it and all that. I said, I understand the etymology of it, but the, the etymology of what that etymology is is this. That's right. That's right. That's Guess what? Right you can't get around honoring your mother and your father. Amen. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Let me go ahead and deal with the killing part. Because you know what? They got a lot of people thinking, okay, killing just talks about having a Glock 9 in somebody's face and pulling the trigger. No. You got a little, little member. That's See? right. Amen. That's unpaid. That is a part of your body. That's right. 
It's a small member of your body. It is the one member that really can't be tamed. But this is the one member that can kill somebody's dream. This is the one member that can kill somebody's aspiration. Yes, yes. Come on here, Pastor. This is the one member that can kill someone's esteem. Yes, yes. What member is that? This is your tongue. Yes. Your big mouth. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not kill a person. Thou shall not kill a, a person's dream. Thou shall not kill a person's aspirations. Thou shall not kill somebody's self-esteem. Stop putting your, your people down. Why are you going to do that? Go ahead and read, my sister. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not commit adultery. Now, I'm going to let you all know something. I ain't married, Pastor Smith. Dr. Smith, I ain't married. I can go ahead and show you in the word that says that your creator is your husband. Come on now. Who are you committing adultery with? Then? All right. You know, I, and John the sixth chapter. I mean, we, we on your own time. You can read the story on your own. Uh, 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 John made me mad. John really made he burnt me up. I mean, I, I'm reading the story, and John made me mad. And, and the lady, she was caught in the very act of adultery by herself. God went on and did something. He said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. All right. John made me mad because I needed some more information. All right. Who was she committing adultery with? Okay. Did they find him? The cheaters bring the cameras? All right. Cheaters. <laughs> what happened? This needs to be in the tabloids. Right. But the Bible said that she was caught in the very act. So if she was caught in the very act, Dr. Ward, right. who was that with her? All right. Right. Where is he? My imagination, <laughs> my imagination is that the dude that she was with was among the guys that was trying to stone her in, in the, the first crowd. place. There you go. In the crowd. Uh-huh. He was at, yeah, he was back in the corner somewhere. Yeah. So when they get started to stone her, he was going to go ahead and be like, oh, I'm throwing a pebble. I did my part. Got away with that one. <laughs> Where you at? 15. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not. Be oh, here it is. Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Oh, somebody said, well, you know, you got to lie about it. No, let me go ahead and let you know something. When you bearing false witness against your neighbor, guess what you're doing? You are telling something about somebody else that ain't true. You are being a tailbearer. Hmm. Oh, let that sizzle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Nor his man servant. Nor his man servant. Nor his maid servant. Nor his maid servant. Nor his ox. Nor his ox. Nor his ass. Nor his ass. Nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now go ahead and continue on in verse 18, and I'm gonna show you how the people reacted once God went on and gave that. See, after he said that, he shut up for a little bit. I want people to let that, uh, I want that to go ahead and get into your spirit. What what happened? Go ahead and read verse 18. And all the people saw the thundering. Yes. And the lightning. Uh-huh. And the noise of the trumpet. Yes. And the mountain smoking. Uh-huh. And when the people saw it, they, was what? they removed 
and stood afar off. All they could think about is all the pomp and circumstance of the Lord their God. Yes. They couldn't think of nothing else. Go ahead and read. And they said unto Moses, What they say? Speak thou with us. Uh huh. And we will hear. Uh huh. But let not God speak with us. But don't let God speak with us. Lest we die. Look here, they were so scared of God. It was like, Moses, hey, we can't have that cat talk to us no more because you know what? He gonna kill us. You talk with us. Go ahead and read. And Moses said unto the people. What did he say? Fear not. Yes. For God has come to prove you. Let me let you know something. Whenever you feel the presence of the Lord, it's a scary moment. <laughs> but then you turn around, Moses said and tell the people, hey, fear not. God is going to prove you. He's proving you today, Israel. Yes. He's proving you right now. How is he proving you? Because the words that he spoke, we just read. Yes. Would you keep them? Uh -huh. mm. Would you do them? Mm -hmm. Would you keep them? Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. And that his fear may be before your faces. Uh huh. That ye sin not. And he made sure that everything that he done was big and spectacular so you won't mess up. Mm hmm. Go ahead and read. And the people stood afar off. Yes. And Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. See, at this time, it was just Moses and the people because the Levitical priesthood was not set, set up yet. It wasn't established. So Moses, he was the emissary. He was the one who 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 who, uh, who spoke. Yes. When God spoke to Moses, Moses spoke to the people. Yes. Okay. You see, uh, so like I was saying, don't have no statues. In fact, I, was, I I remember when I was playing for the Catholic Church. I played for the Catholic Church before. You know, I was one. I'm one of those musicians that can sight read. I can, you know, put some. You can put uh, music right in front of me, and I can go for it. Right. right. Uh, now, now I, I used to play for this Catholic Church, right? And, and uh, I was playing for the Catholic Church, and every time you turn around, there's a statue, a picture, or something, and you almost tripped over all them statues there, yeah. right? So the, this is what he told us. He didn't want us to have no statues, no pictures, no right. nothing representing him. Okay? I'm, I'm trying to go ahead and show you something here because there's a lot of people who would take that crucifix and pray to it. And he said, thou should have no other God before me. Mm-hmm. Then he went on and showed you something about the Sabbath. Now I wanted to go ahead and pour this thing out. The Sabbath is so important to God that he included it in the 10. Yes. yes. If it wasn't that important, he would have never included it. That's right. Genesis chapter 2. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see something here. Let's see something here. Let me show you how important this law is. The 24th chapter of Exodus we're going to. Go ahead and go to the 24th chapter. We're going to read one verse there, and then we're going to, we're going to talk about it. Exodus 24 and 12, what does it say? And the Lord said unto Moses, Yeah. Come up to me into the mount. Yes. And be there. Uh-huh. And I will give thee tables of stone. Yes. And a law. Uh huh. And commandments. Yes. Which I have written. Which who have written? God. He said, I have written. Go ahead and read. That thou mayest teach them. That you may teach them. I gave you the manuscript. I gave you the curriculum. I gave you the words. Right. Right. God did. Right. That you may teach them. That's right. That's right. So what are you teaching without this? Right. How come you got some preacher that's going to come up to you and read half a scripture and then go ahead and talk to you three, three hours out of, the time, out of that whole time and only read one scripture to you? What you teaching, Jack? That's right. You can't say that you're teaching the word of God. Amen. You sit up there giving your own opinion. Preach. 
News flash. I'm just animated dirt and air. Come on now. Come on. The one who created the animation for the dirt and air, I don't know his formula to it. Okay. But he gave me information that he wrote down with his own finger. Yes. And you want to bypass that? Here it is. You want to call it the law of Moses. Oh, my God. Well, you know, we ain't got to keep the law of Moses. All I see right here, in fact, Moses wasn't even the secretary on this situation. Moses was the recipient of what was written. That's so true. That is so true. Exodus 32. Exodus 32. I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'm going to come right around home and say, I'm, I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm glad. I'm getting right there to it. I had to go ahead and do some groundwork first. Exodus 32. Pick it up on verse 1. Go ahead and read. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down yes. out of the mount, uh-huh. the people gathered themselves together uh-huh. in the area, yes, and said unto him, Yes, up, make us God, uh-huh. which shall go before us. Yes. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, yes. we wot not. What is become of him? We don't know what happened to Moses. He's still up there. How come he? Where he at? We see him go up in the thick cloud, but we ain't seen him come back out. This is what they said. But he, they said he went to who? Aaron, the son yes. of Levi, yes. the priest, right? right? And said, "Make us gods." What did he make the gods out of? Let's go ahead and find out. Go ahead and read. And Aaron said unto them. Break off the golden earrings, yes, which are in the ears of your wives, yes, of your sons, yes, and of your daughters, and do what? And bring them unto me. And what do they do? And all the people break off, break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, uh huh, and brought them unto Aaron. Uh huh. And what did Aaron do with those earrings? And he received them at their hands, yes, and fashioned it. With a graving tool. Yes. After he had made it a molten calf. Uh huh. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Hold on. Hold on. If this be the God that brought you out of that God was in your ear. Right. Okay. (laughs) That lets me know. That people will believe anything. anything. Yes. That happens today. That's right. They believe everything. If the preacher said, guess what? I believe it. Exactly. Amen. Amen. See, we have this one cardinal rule here at Experiencing God's Word Center of Hope. If you can't read it, uh-huh. don't believe it. That's it. You're sitting up here wanting to worship a golden calf uh-huh. that was made out of your no. earrings that was here it is in your daughter's ear? Your daughter's ear. <laughs> <laughs> For real? Amen. Go ahead and read. What else did he do with this? Sit on down to verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, let thee down uh-huh. for thy people, uh-huh. which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt. Now, he, now God went on and did something. That nobody ever paid attention to this part of the script right here. I, I've read over this uh, oh, over a few million times. <laughs> he, he, he didn't even say my people. <laughs> He said, Moses, go get to your people. Uh-huh. He, he didn't even claim. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moses, go get your people. Oh, exactly. 
I, I remember I remember when I when I was ha I had my my firstborn son Albert right uh -huh. and uh and his mother uh his mother uh sister his name her name was Jackie uh her name is Jackie rather and, and uh uh, 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 uh Jacqueline uh, so we call it Jackie, and uh, and, and Jackie, she she was a uh, one of the, uh, she she been in prison for most of her life. So uh, uh, mostly, what she do is uh, uh, you know she she wanted to go ahead and change her gender, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and Jackie came up and, and was talking about Albert. Oh, he's like, he gonna be a man like me. I'm like, get your people. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Right. Get your people out of here. Get your people. <laughs> I can laugh about that now. Boy, I thank God for my son, boy. That boy there. Oh my Go ahead and uh, skip down to verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. Uh huh. And the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. Uh huh. The tables were written in both their sides. Yes. On both their sides. Yes. On the one side and on the other were they written. And wh whose hand wrote it? And the tables were the work of God. Yes. And the writing was the writing of God. Wow. Yes. Graven unto the upon the table. Yes. Wow. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, now skip. Wait, wait. Now skip on that verse nineteen. Verse nineteen. Go ahead and read. Now this was the work of God. God wrote it with His own finger. This is important stuff here. This is very important. He went on and took the painstaking time to write on both sides of right? the stone. Now, let me go ahead and show you something. It wasn't written on parchment. No. no. It wasn't an email. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -mm. It, wasn't. it wasn't a floating text. No, it wasn't. He wrote it in stone. That's yes. right. And let me let you know something. I, if it's in stone, it's supposed to exist for how long? Forever. In stone. That's right. Wow. Mm. He wrote that long. In stone. Yes. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass. Yes. As soon as he came nigh unto the calf. Yes. That he saw the calf. He saw the calf. And the dancing. Oh, here it is. We know who we're talking about Israel now. And the dancing. What else? Moses' anger waxed hot. Yes. And he cast the tables uh -huh. out of his hands. Uh huh. And break them beneath the mouth. Why did he break them? Because they broke even the first one. Yes. Thou shalt have no, no other, other God, God before oh, me. Moses got mad. Yes, he did. Israel know how to party. Yes. When I say we know how to party, baby, <laughs> let yes. you know something. We know how to party. <laughs> Nobody can two step better than Israel. All right. Mm hmm. Then you know you go through all the generations and everything. The OJs came. Then Jodeci came. Then from Jodeci we had Drew Hill. Drew Hill came. Then you got uh you you messing around and getting to. Uh, folks that uh, really know how to do it. See, this other generation, I ain't going to go into all that stuff because, you know, I don't, I don't really listen to their music anyway. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stick to, you know, stick to the Def Jam generation. That's my generation. You know, I I, I can dabble with Motown a little bit. I don't, I don't know about all these others. <laughs> oh, I don't know about the others. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just trying to go ahead and keep it real. Keep it real. Go to Deuteronomy the 10th chapter. I'm showing you that this law that was written by the hand of God meant something. It meant something. And it stands today. It still stands. Mm-hmm. Right, written in 
Stop. I'm getting to I'm getting to the title. I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm getting there. But just let me let me go ahead and do this groundwork real fast, okay? The tenth chapter of Deuteronomy. Pick it up at verse one, and we're gonna see something. Read it. At that time, the Lord said unto me, "Yes, heal the two tables of stone, uh -huh. like unto the first. Yes, and come up unto me into the mount, uh huh, and make thee an ark of wood. Now look here." At the Moses one threw those tables down because he broke the law. Yeah, yeah. It's so important to Jesus. He said, "Give me two more stones." That's right. I'm gonna do it all over again. I'm gonna do it all over again. Give you a second chance. Look, did Moses write this thing down? Let's find out. Let's find out. Go ahead and read, my sister. And I made an ark of shit of wood. No, skip. Go to verse two. Oh, verse two. Mm -hmm. And I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. Uh huh. And thou shalt put them in the ark. Who's writing it? This is the Lord. The Lord. I will. He's going to write it again. again. How can this be the law of Moses if he is the one just getting the stone to be written on by who? The Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, wow! It can't be no plainer than that. Moses didn't sit back and record it and, and try to go ahead and write it. No, Jesus wrote it again. Wrote it again. Go ahead and read verse three. And I made it. No, you go. Oh, skip the yeah. two. And I made an ark of shit of wood. Yes, he did. And hewed two tables of stone like unto the first and went up into the mount. Uh huh. Having the two tables in my hand. Verse four. And he wrote on the tables. Uh huh. According to the first writing. Uh huh. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. Which the Lord spake unto you in the mount uh -huh. out of the midst of the fire uh -huh. in the day of the assembly. Yes. And the Lord gave them unto me. So he wrote the same exact words that he spoke to you on the mount and the same exact words that he wrote on the first set of stones. Right. Did he change anything? No. No, he didn't change it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He didn't change a thing. And guess what? He brought it. He, 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 the Lord gave them unto me. Yes. Give me them stones, Moses. That's right. He wrote on it. Here, Moses. Skip down to verse 12. What does it say? And now, uh -huh. Israel, uh -huh. what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Yes. But to fear the Lord thy God. Yes. To walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. And to love him. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all our heart. And with all thy soul. Yes, keep on reading. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Yes. And his statutes. Yes. Which I command thee this day. For what? For thy good. For thy good. Now check this out. Somebody, uh, uh, I, I, I'm talking with this Gentile brother, and, and he always want to run to what Paul said. Well, Paul said, you know, we ain't got to get circumcised no more. We got to circumcise our heart. Uh-huh. That's what he said. Let me go ahead and let you all know something. Circumcising your heart is an old thing. Where did Paul get it from? We're about to run into it. Skip down to verse 16. What does he say? Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. And be what? And be no more stiff necked. In other words, stop being hard headed. Yes. It's not rocket science. All right. Circumcise the foreskin of your heart. Stop sinning. And keep them commandments yes. that God wrote with his own finger. His own finger. Now let's go ahead and see where Paul is misconstrued. Okay. 
you know, Peter says, no, Paul's writing is hard to understand. I understand why. Paul is talking to an audience, and he had to let the audience know what's going on. That's right. He knew his audience. Yeah. It's a different audience. Right. Galatians, the third chapter. Galatians, the third chapter. Pick it up on the one. What does it say? Oh, foolish Galatians. Stop. <laughs> we knew. He knew who he was talking to. Yes. He had to call them what they are. Oh, foolish Galatians. These are Greeks. Okay, yes, they are. They don't know no better. They know how to make a weapon of mass destruction, but they do not know how to make a stop sign. See? See? They don't know nothing about a stoplight. You see the difference? See the difference? Oh, foolish Galatians. Don't let not. And brothers and sisters, if you are the descendants of the victims of the Atlantic Indian Ocean slave trade, Israel is who you are. Yes. Israel is who you are. You are not. Gentile. Amen. You calling yourself Gentile in church because the Gentiles who brought you over to read the language that they that you had to adopt yes. told you you were like them for identity purposes. Have anybody ever heard of the Willie Lynch letter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Willie Lynch letter actually gave the instructions how to make a slave. Not just how to make a slave, how to make that slave believe that that's all they are. So the best way that they can go ahead and do that is first of all, change your name. Yes. You're not Kunta no more. Uh -huh. You're Toby. <laughs> You're not Ezra no more. You're Gentile. Mm. You see? Right. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Oh, foolish Galatians. What? Who hath bewitched? Who tricked you? Go ahead and read. That ye should not obey the truth. That ye should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth. And what? Crucified among you. Crucified among you. Go ahead and read verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Yes. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law. Uh -huh. Or by the hearing of faith. He asked the question. You going to receive the spirit by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? Now we're getting into what I'm talking about. I'm glad it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Verse six. Even as Abraham believed God, yes, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Yeah. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Yes, they are. And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justly justify justify the heathens. Through faith, yes. preach before preach before the gospel unto Abraham. Saying what? Saying, in these shall all nations be blessed. Indeed, verse 9. So then they which they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Yes. Abraham, according to uh what we know now, Abraham is the father of the faithful. Yes, he is. Okay, because we just read that right there. Mm -hmm. Abraham didn't always have that kind of faith. Uh, that, that joker had, had, had to even laugh. Right. <laughs> you show, right. I'm 100 years old, Jack. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Viagra too. <laughs> but <laughs> come on, Jack. <laughs> Verse 11, skip two. But that no man is justified by the law 
in the sight of God. Yes. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Oh my God. You are not justified by the law. But the question is, what law? Well, all right. I'm about to go ahead and reveal this thing to you, but let me go ahead and deal with Abraham for a little bit. Go ahead and skip on down to verse 15. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Yes. Though it be but a man's covenant. Yes. Yet if it be confirmed, no man annul it. Disannul it, uh-huh. Disannul it. Uh-huh. Or add it. Verity. Meaning that you can't take away from it and you can't add nothing to it. Keep on reading. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now Abraham and his seed was the promise made. Go ahead and read. He saith not. Uh huh. And to seed. Yes. As of many. He didn't say the plural form of seeds, but what did he say? His seed. Uh huh. Read on. But as of one. Uh huh. And to thou see, uh huh, which is Christ. He went on and took it down to a singular, which is Christ. That's now, right. Christ came out of the seed of Abraham. Now, look here Moses, when he was up in the mount, he seen all that stuff going on, all the mockery that was going on. He went on to throw the, the tables down, he got so mad. Yes, then, then what did Jesus say? Hey, the people became naked. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When you can come naked, you get blotted out, right? Yes. That's what the book said, right? So, yes. and, and, and then he went on and told Moses, say, hey, Moses, I'm going to kill them all. I got you. I still can keep my promise to Abraham. All right. Because all I need is one Israelite. Come on. That's right. Yeah. I can go ahead and use your seed, Moses. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And this I say. Mm hmm that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ. Yes. The law. The law. Which was 430 years after. Yes. Cannot disannul. Can't disannul it. That it should make the promise of non effect. 430 years after what? Oh, my goodness. Now it's getting interesting here. Why did Paul bring up that number of 430 years? We got to go ahead and figure this thing out because we got to understand that this is what's going on. Now, what we have to go ahead and find 430 years after what? Let's go ahead and figure this out. Let's go back to Exodus. See, I tell people all the time, if you don't understand something in the New Testament, always have your string tied to the Old Testament. In fact, Peter said uh, something very strange. He said, I have a more sure word of prophecy. prophecy. That's the old what did he say? What do you meant by that? If I don't understand anything in this New Testament, the Old Testament is straighten it right on out. 430 years after. Well, let's find out the 12th chapter of Exodus and pick it up at verse 29. What does it say? And it came to pass yes. that at midnight yes. the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Yes. From the firstborn of Pharaoh yes. that sat on his throne uh -huh. unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. Keep on reading. And all the firstborn of cattle. He was absolute, the firstborn of everything. Yes. Uh huh. So, you know what? If your brother was older than you and he was the firstborn, he died. And if he had a firstborn, he died. Right, right. Okay. Go ahead and read. And Pharaoh rose up in the night. Mm -hmm. He and all his servants. Yes. And all the Egyptians. Yes. And there was a great cry in Egypt. Yes. For there was not a house where there was not one. See, day. when 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 he when 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 the when the Lord told Moses, okay, I need for you to go ahead and put the blood on your doorpost, right? right? And, and, and guess what? The news came, went around all the area. The news went around everywhere. Mm 
Putting the blood on your doorpost, on your two side posts. Guess what? That that angel was not looking for the Israelite. No. He was looking for the blood. Looking for the blood. So the ones who didn't obey and didn't have the blood, here it is at midnight. Yes. Now I'm deaf. Uh huh. Death knocks at the door. Yes. That's it. Let you know you better obey. obey. Death is gonna. Yes. Go ahead and read. And he called for Moses yes. and Aaron by night. Yes. And said, Uh huh. Rise up. And get you forth from among my people. Yes. Both ye and the children of Israel. Uh huh. And go serve the Lord. Go serve the Lord. As ye have said. As ye have said. Also, take your flocks. Take your flocks. And your herd. Uh huh. As ye have said. Yes. And be gone. And be gone. And bless me all. And bless me because you gone. Go ahead and read. And the Egyptians were urgent uh -huh. upon the people yes. that they might send them out of the land in haste. Yes. For they said, we be all dead men. We be all dead men. Let's skip on down to verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt. Now from the time that Joseph was in Israel, uh, in Egypt, right? The sojourning. So that's when Israel was there. It started with Joseph. Go ahead and read. Was 430 years. How can that be? 430 years after what? After Israel got up out of Egypt. All right. You know you explained that good. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass. Uh-huh. At the end of the 430 years, yes, even the self same day, uh -huh. it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord, yes, went out from the land of Egypt. While well, in Egypt, and after they, this was Israel, came out, animal sacrifice didn't exist among them. They wanted to go ahead and sacrifice unto the Lord, but not for sin. Right. They wanted to worship the Lord, but not for they didn't sacrifice no animals for sin. That, that's the reason why he said, uh, uh, that's the reason why Pharaoh said, hey, go ahead, worship the Lord the way you want to worship him. Get up out of here. Get up out of here. Now go back to the third chapter of Galatia. Okay. Now we're going to see this thing, and, and, and we're going to see how this thing worked out. Okay, and in fact, instead of starting at verse 18, start at verse 17, because I've got to show you who this is talking about. Read verse 17. And this I say, mm -hmm. that the covenant yes. that was confirmed before the before of God, yes. Christ, yes. the law, the law, which was 430 years after, uh -huh. cannot disannul. Uh-huh. That it should make the promise of none effect. Keep on reading. For if the inheritance be of the law, yes, it is no more a promise. It's no more a promise. What law? This is the now the introduction of the law of animal sacrifice. Because you know what? God had to go ahead and do something. What did he do? He, he kept breaking the law. So we know that the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. So you break the law, something got to die. Right. That even happened in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Adam broke the law. I'm going to say Adam because it was him. Eve was deceived. Yes. Right. Adam knew better. Yes. He broke the law. Right. So something had to die. It wasn't Adam that died immediately. Uh-uh. What happened? God went on and made them coats of skin. Now, where did he get the skin from? All right. An animal. All right. Something had to die. That's right. Go ahead and read. But, but God gave it to Abraham yes. by promise. Yes. Wherefore, 
then serveth the law. Why do you serve the law? Uh huh. It was added because of transgression. It was added because of transgression. Go ahead and read. Till the seed uh -huh. should come yes. to whom the promise was made. Uh huh. And it was ordained by angels. In the what? In the hand of a mediator when jesus died on the cross the law of animal sacrifice was ended yes the law of animal sacrifice guess what it was added because of sin of sin yes let me show you because it says transgression so what is sin what is sin oh i'm, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the biblical definition of so you won't have to guess this. this. I don't want to have you having a guessing game here real good. Let's go to 1 John, the third chapter. We're going to read one verse. Somebody said, well, we don't have to do that old law no more. Uh-uh, no, nah, what we're talking about is the animal sacrifice law. Guess what? I'm glad it didn't work out. Amen. All right. Amen. Glad it didn't work out. Come on. Glad it didn't work out. What does it say? First John 3 and 4. What does it say? Whosoever committed sin does what? Transgresseth also the law. For what? For sin is the transgression of the law. What law? The royal law. Royal. The same law that he wrote with his own finger. You break that law, you have sinned. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and let you know, it's not hard to live the way. It's not hard to be Christian. Yeah. People are making up all kinds of sins all the time because they don't know no better. Right. Well, it's a sin for you to have your dress uh, right above your knee. No, it ain't. It's a sin for you to have a silk press on your head. No, it ain't. I'm about to go ahead and bring it on home to you. It's a sin for you to go ahead and sit at the bar, have yourself a blue moon, and watch the Chiefs play. No, it ain't. What law are you breaking? All right. Romans, the fifth chapter. I mentioned Ab uh, Adam. Sin entered into the world by one man. It wasn't Eve. You can go to the Apocrypha on your own time. No, I don't, I don't want, to go, want you to go to the Apocrypha. But if you will read into the Apocrypha, because I read everything. Yeah, I read everything. When I tell you I read everything, I read the Apocrypha. I read all the books of Enoch. I read, I, I read, I, I read the catacombs. See, but you know, if you ain't got no strength in this, That's right. Thank you. Right. if you ain't strong in this, I don't suggest you want to go ahead and do all that. But you know, you get, you get somebody like me. I'm trying to read everything because I'm trying to find out how to slice you up with your own doctrine. I'm reading everything. Uh, you know what? If you are strong in this word, Dr. Ward, you can read a book written by Satan himself and it ain't going to move you. Romans, the fifth chapter. Adam, he ushered in something. Let's see what Adam ushered in. The fifth chapter, pick it up at verse 12. We're going to read two verses there. Go ahead and read. Wherefore? Mm-hmm. As by one man sin entered into the world, yes, and death by sin. So what? Ha what did that death do? And so death passed upon all men. So you cannot tell me that you don't have a curse that has been passed down from the beginning of mankind. Yes, yes. Everybody that you know that died before you was subject to this one thing called death. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you that death was not a part of the creation when it was when it started. No, it wasn't. 
death was never supposed to be part of the creation. How do I know? What, you go down to the third chapter, read close to the, uh, the last two verses of the third chapter of Genesis. It says, oh, man, look, man had became like us to know good and evil. Now, lest he put forth his hand and eat of the fruit of the tree of life and live forever. Do you understand that the only thing that's keeping you from Godhood is living forever? We know how to create. And if you live long enough, you'll figure out how to create everything. That's the reason why I can read in the book that a child is going to die at 100 years. He's calling a hundred year old man a child. <laughs> Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. See, we've been given the law, but we have this thing that we just always go backwards. Okay? Jeremiah the seventh chapter, pick it up in verse 21. What does the Lord say? Thus said the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. the God of Israel, uh -huh. put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices uh -huh. and eat flesh. What does he mean by that? He said, Don't get make no sacrifice for me and then go ahead and have you a barbecue. Mm -hmm. Put them steaks on, make sure they're well done. Yes. Well done. You can go ahead and put your herbs and everything on there. Make the steak taste good. Yeah. According to my brother, the best thing to put on the steak is salt and pepper. <laughs> Go ahead and read. For I spake not unto your father. Yes. And com nor commanded them in the day yes. that I brought them out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. concerning burnt offering yes. or sacrifice. Verse 23. But this thing commanded I them saying, What did he say? Obey my voice. Say that again. Obey my voice. Do it one more time. Obey my voice. Y'all got the point? Yes. Keep on reading. And I will be your God. And I will be your God. And ye shall be my people. And you will be my people. So if you don't obey him, he is not your God. And you are not his people. That's true. That's the word. So if you believe that Jesus died on. The, 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 uh, on, on Easter, uh, uh, that rose up on a Good Friday and rose up Easter Sunday morning. That that ain't your the God that we're reading about ain't your God. Uh huh. Yeah. Look, if you say that all the all the law is nailed on the cross and everything, the God that we're reading about ain't your God. Well, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. For uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it just like that. All right. Because you know what? You ain't talking about the God of this Bible. What are you talking about? You got another Jesus. Paul said it in the 14th chapter, 12, 11th chapter of Corinthians. Another Jesus? Another Jesus? Show sure enough. Go ahead and read. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, uh -huh. that it may be well unto you. Yes. But they hearken not. But they hearken not. Nor incline their ear. But walk, walk through the what? Walk in the counsels. Uh huh. In the Im imagination of their evil heart. It went and where? And went backward. Uh huh. And not forward. How are you gonna go towards immortality first, and then you gonna go ahead and break the law? You are gonna go backwards, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. What is the opposite of immortality? Mortality. Who is the person that embalms you? The mortician. Yes. Right. You see the word? Right. Death. Mm. Now we got to go ahead and find out about something here. We see two different laws. 
Paul wanted to put it out in Galatians. We see the two different laws. We see the law of animal sacrifice, and now we see the law that he wrote with his own finger. Now we got to go ahead and rationalize what was Paul talking about. Okay. Let's go ahead and see this. Let's go ahead and see that Jesus actually was among us. The 24th chapter of Exodus, and we're going to see this. 25th chapter of Exodus, I'm sorry. 25th chapter of Exodus and pick it up on the one. We're going to speed up a little bit. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Yes. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. that they bring me an offering. Bring them an offering? Of every man that giveth it willingly. Uh huh. His heart, uh huh. Ye shall take. My look here. He said, let them bring an offering. Let me let you all know something. Bring an offering. I ain't talking about the offering of your cattle or your, your livestock because you ain't got now. That's right. Bring an offering of what you have. Your paycheck. Amen. Yeah. I cannot sit up here and pay the rent here with a bleeding Lamb. Well, here's a lamb. This is this should suffice for the rent. Mm -mm. These people want to check. They, they, they want to check, and it, it has the, the the name of the institution on the check with the amount agreed upon. And guess what else? My signature. And guess what? <laughs> they want to make sure that once it's been presented to the bank, it is transferred for currency. Yes. So bring an offering. Yes. Mm -hmm. Skip on down to verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary. That what? That I may dwell among them. According to what? According to all that I show thee after the patterns of the tabernacle uh -huh. and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. See, God the world among the children of Israel until they disobeyed. Right. Then that disobedience made him leave and go and return to heaven because he will get so hot, he will be like, you're dead. Yeah. He needed them to stay around so he can make sure that that promise was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Now go skip on over to the next chapter. I'm going to show you something. Because I'm going to show you the holy place, right? I'm going to show you how did he make the holy place happen because this is an integral part into what Jesus actually did on the cross. You got to know what was already in place first before Jesus got on the cross. Okay? The 26th chapter of Exodus, pick it up on the one and we're going to skip. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine, twined linen. Yes. And blue. And blue. And purple. And purple. purple and, scarlet. and scarlet. With cherubims of cunning work. Uh huh. Shall thou make them? Uh huh. Skip on down to verse 30. And thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof, uh -huh. which was showed thee. In the mouth. Uh huh. Verse thirty one. And thou shalt make a veil. A veil. A veil of blue. Uh huh. And purple. Yes. And scarlet. Uh huh. And fine twined linen of cunning work. Yes. With cherubims shall it be made. So you know what? Let's let you know that Israel are real good artists and everything because you know what? They were able to make this and put the cherubims in there. You know that? that they had to be very artistic to go ahead and listen to what uh, what Moses said a cherub looked like. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood uh -huh. overlaid with gold. Yes. Their hooks 
shall be of gold uh -huh. upon the four sockets of silver. Uh huh. Verse thirty-three. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches. Uh huh. That thou mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony. So on the other side of the veil is the ark of the testimony that had the two stones of testimony with God rolling his own finger on there. Go ahead and read. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place. The holy place. And the most holy place. And the most holy place. Verse 34. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony. Yes. In the most holy place. Okay, so now we're seeing what's going on. Now let's go ahead and see the uh uh the birth of the Levitical priesthood. I gotta show you this because I gotta show you what Christ did on the cross. All right. Okay, look, let's go ahead and see the birth of the Levitical priesthood, the 28th chapter of Exodus. Go ahead and read verse one. And take down to the Aaron, yes. his brother, uh -huh. and his sons with him uh -huh. from among the children of Israel. That they may do what? That they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Yes. Even Aaron. Aaron. Nadab. Nadab. And Elihu. And Abihu. Uh huh. I'm sorry. Abihu. Uh huh. Eleazar. Eleazar. And Ithamar. And Ithamar. Aaron's son. Yes. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, uh -huh. for glory uh -huh. and for beauty. See, the priest is supposed to be some good looking cats. Yes. Glory. It's supposed to be looking good at all times. You know, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And thou shalt speak unto that all that are wise hearted. Yes. Whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. Yes. That they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate. To consecrate, to consecrate him. him. Uh huh. That he may minister unto me in the priest's office. All right. So what did the Levitical priests actually do? What was their job? Let's go ahead and find out. Leviticus the fourth chapter. We're going to see the Leviticus. We're going to see how what the priests actually had to do. Leviticus 4 and verse 1. What does it say? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, What did he say? Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Yes. If a soul shall sin through ignorance uh -huh. against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, yes, and shall do against any of them, uh huh. If the priest that is anointed, uh huh, do sin, uh huh, according to the sin of the people, let he do, what do you got to do? Then let him bring for his sin. Which he had sinned. A what? A young bullock. Without what? Without blemish unto the Lord. What is it? For a sin offering. It is a sin offering, okay? What are you going to do with this sin offering? Read on. And he shall bring the bullock. Uh huh. Unto the door of the tabernacle. Yes. Of the congregation. Yes. For the Lord. Uh huh. And shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head. And do what to the bullock? And kill the bullock. Before the Lord. And what else he gonna do? And the priest that is anointed shall take the bullock's blood uh -huh. and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse six. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood. He's gonna dip his finger in the blood. And sprinkle of the blood uh -huh. seven times. Seven times before the Lord. Before the Lord. Before the veil. Before the veil, which is on the veil. You're going to sprinkle the blood on the veil. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Well, skip down to no, no, no. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. If you sin, you bring a sin offering. The priest kills the animal. The animal will take the blood of the veil animal and sprinkle it on the veil that we just saw in the 25th chapter of Exodus that he made. On the veil. And that veil 
was there, and that was an atonement for the sin that you had done. Okay? Now we're getting ready to get into something real fast because now we got to see something. Guess what? It was for sins that were ignorant, you're ignorant yes. of. It was sins that you didn't know that you did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if you said and you knew what you were doing, <laughs> ain't no more sacrifice for you, Jack. Galatians, the third chapter. We're going back to Galatians, the third chapter. Guess what? That blood that was sprinkled on the veil could never take away sin. It just appeased it. Right. You know what? They told me what appeasement is, ain't Carolyn? Mm -hmm. They said appeasing is making the person that you have to appease happy and everyone else around them ain't. Including you. <laughs> right. Galatians third chapter, pick it up verse 21, and we're gonna see this. Because now we've seen the law of animal sacrifice and why animal sacrifice was instituted. It was because of sin, right? Yes. Go ahead and read 21. Is the law then against promises, the promises of God? Mm -hmm. God forbid. God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Oh, so the law. There's two different laws he's talking about right here. The law of animal sacrifice and the royal law. The royal law gives you righteousness. The animal sacrifice is the one that is questioned. Okay? I see, I'm trying to compare the two to you right now. One of them, I'm glad it didn't work out. Okay, right, right. Okay, go go to the seventh chapter of Romans. I hope I'm not boring you. I'm just trying to go ahead and get you get you to know something here. I, I want I want to show you this right. Okay, the seventh chapter of Romans. I know it's kind of long, but I I need you to get this. Seventh chapter of Romans. Pick it up in verse seven. What does it say? What shall we say then? Yes. Is the law seen? He's asking a good question, and everybody want to go ahead and say what Paul said. What Paul said. See, they don't even understand that Paul's name was actually Saul, and Saul is a Benjamite. And since Paul Saul was a Benjamite, the first king of Israel was a Benjamite, and his name was Saul. Right. right you know, right. Paul is just a nickname that them Gentiles gave him. That's all. Yeah. So Paul is Toby. Uh huh. It ain't Kent. It ain't Kunta. Toby. Go ahead and read. God forbid. God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. I have not known sin, but by the law. He's talking about the royal law now, right? Right. Thou shalt not covet. Go ahead and read. For I had not known lust, mm -hmm. except the law had said, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not covet. Verse 8. But sin, uh -huh. taken occasion by the by the commandment, uh -huh. wrought in me all manner of con concupiscence. <laughs> so that's uncleanliness. Concupiscence is uncleanliness. Go ahead and read. For without uh -huh. the law, sin was dead. The law, but without the law, sin was dead. Do you know that you can't have sin without the law? Wait, what you mean, preacher? Right. You can't have sin without the law. Do you know that you can't have a sanction without the ordinance? Well, break it down for me further. You can't get a ticket without speeding. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's got to be a law against. The law said don't speed. Right. The ticket came because you were spinning. That's right. right. So you can't have sin without the law. It's like a hand in gloves. Right. Go ahead and read. 
For I was alive without the law once. I was alive without the law once. Marlon, before I came into the truth, believe me, boy, I was the chief sinner. I was alive with it, too. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was alive with it. You talking about womanizer? You look up, you, at one time you can look in the dictionary, the word womanizer, and you'll see me smiling. That was who I was. But Christ came. Go ahead and read. But when the commandment came, uh -huh. sin revived. Sin revived. And I died. And I died. Go ahead and read. And the commandment. And the commandment. Which was ordained to life. Which was ordained to what? Ordained to life. Uh huh. I found to be unto death. And I found it to be to death. Go ahead and read. For sin. For sin. Taking occasion by the commandment. Taking occasion by the commandment. Do what? It, it deceived me. And by law, it slew me. And it by it, it slew me. When you come into the truth, you are now dead to sin. How, what do you mean That's by that? Right. That means that you don't do that old stuff no more. Oh, that's what it is. You don't do none of that old stuff anymore. You don't allow for nobody to come in and, and just take you out because uh, you don't do what they what you used to do. Guess what? Guess what? I can walk down the street and I ain't got to look over my shoulder. That's right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Wherefore the law is holy. Wherefore the law is holy. And the commandment holy. And the commandment holy. And just. And just. And good. And good. I can close the book now. Oh, yeah. Okay, absolutely. But I gotta go ahead and show you what Jesus did. Come on. We right. I gotta show you what Jesus did. Go to Hebrews the 10th chapter. Go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Almost done. Almost done. Amen. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Hebrews 10 and verse 1. What does it say? For the law having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not the very image of the things, uh -huh. and never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the commerce there unto earth. You remember the law that we was talking about? The law of animal sacrifice? They did it year by year. year right. as atonement, right? It can't make you perfect. Anthony, that means something can. There you go. Yes. Right. That couldn't make you perfect. Right. But something can make you perfect. Right. Right. What is perfect? The only thing I know is perfect is God. God. Hold on. Something can make me God. All right. Something to think about. Wow. Never thought that far. <laughs> I thought about retirement and my 401k and my track accounts. Okay. Didn't think about being God. Being God? All right. Being perfect. Ooh. All right. And Carolyn, is it possible? Yes. yes. The world is listening. Go ahead and read. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats and of goats should take away sins. Uh, skip down to verse uh, four. That was verse, four. Uh, verse four. Go ahead and read verse five. Wherefore, men. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, what did he say? He said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but what? But a body hast thou prepared me. Even to this day, people don't understand that he what he did he didn't come out of Mary, he went through Mary. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. 
He went through the whole nine months. He went through the baby swallowing and everything. Yes. I can imagine that he may have a best friend named Lazarus. Because uh-huh. that was his best friend. That's what the book yes. says. Uh-huh. Your friend. Now, you know, you got to you gotta understand that, you know, when, when, uh, when Christ was a little boy, he had to play with somebody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They was on Little League together. <laughs> They they built chairs and everything together. What what was it? You know, like what like what I used to do uh, when I when I went down to uh, Arkansas with my my cousins Dickie Berg and Bobo, get on top of the middle roof and, and uh, have uh, some orange whistle. I had a whole case of orange whistle uh, soda and Mister Good Bars, and we we throw uh, the walnuts that came on the, the metal roof at people and we, we were laughing at them. Oh, my goodness. Y'all were being funny. <laughs> we were friends. Your friend. See, Lazarus happened to be that type of friend. Yes. Right? Go ahead and read. And burnt offerings uh-huh. and sacrifices yes. for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Yes. Then said I. Then said I. Lord, no. I come in the volume of the book. Uh huh. It is written of me. What is the volume of the book? Genesis to Malachi. Yes, right. Hey, hey, Want to go ahead and say, well, you know, well, we're in the new covenant now. We in the New Testament. So why are you just going to go ahead and read just the testimony? The testimony of what? What was already written. You're just going to go off the testimony? You don't have nothing to be to be an antecedent? It's only simple. It's only simple. Yes. Go ahead and read. To do thy will, O God. Yes. Above when he said, mm-hmm. sacrifice and offering. Yes. And burnt offering. Yes. And offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Yeah. Neither has pleasure therein, uh-huh. which are offered by the law. Verse 9. Then said he, Yes. Lord, I come to do thy will, O God. What does he do? He taketh away the first. He took away the first. That he may establish. That he may establish the second. He took away the first covenant. Yes. That he may establish the second. Yes. Right. What was the first covenant? Oh, here it is. The things that I'm glad that didn't work out. That's right. That's right. I'm glad animal sacrifice didn't work out. I'm glad that fringes didn't work out. I'm glad that the, the law of my eyelids didn't work out. I'm glad that the law of my door person on my city gates didn't work out. So I can have it on my inward part. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm glad. I got it here. In fact, just go ahead and touch yourself right here. And say, I got it here. I got it here. I know thou shalt not. Yes. That's what Jesus did for you. Yes. How did he do it, though? Yes. How did he do it? Let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's go ahead and go down to Matthew 27. And I'm going to go ahead and land my whole argument here. Matthew 27 and pick it up at verse 45. And I'm going to land my argument here. I'm glad it didn't work out. You don't understand. You can go ahead and stand before God and say, God, I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm glad it didn't work out. Yes. You put that law right here. Therefore, I have an opportunity. Here it is to be perfect. Yes. Matthew 27, verse 45. What does it say? Now from the sixth hour. Now from the sixth hour. There was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. So the sixth hour is 12, uh, 12 p.m. Uh-huh. Noon. Yes. 
sixth hour, the ninth hour is three o'clock. Okay? It was dark. Is it usually dark? No, no it's not. not High not. noon. Go ahead and read. And about the ninth hour, uh -huh. Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, What did he say? Eli, Eli, uh -huh. Lama Sabachthani. Uh -huh. Lama Sabachthani. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He even had to say that. But not ready, Anthony. He had to say it. Yes. It was in prophecy. Somebody want to go ahead and say, well, we don't need that Old Testament no more. Yes, well, how do you know what he had to say, what he had to say? Right. Go ahead and read and skip on down to verse 50. What did he say? Jesus. Uh -huh. When he had cried again with a loud voice, yes. yielded up the ghost. He yielded up the ghost. Go ahead and read. And behold, uh -huh. the veil of the temple. The veil of the temple, you remember the same veil that we were talking about. The same one that you sprinkled the blood on, right? The same one that, that was made and had uh, the, 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 the rod made out of shit and wood that, that was, uh, uh, had gold covering all over it and all the, all the pomp and circumstance with that veil. That veil. What, what happened to that veil? Was rent and twain. It, it was written twain from what? Top to the bottom. From top to the bottom. And the earth did quake. Uh huh. And the rocks rent. Now look here. Okay. What was the purpose of the veil? It was to sprinkle the blood for animal sacrifice. Yeah, that was the purpose. So if the veil ripped from top to bottom, where do you sprinkle? The blood. If you ain't got nowhere to sprinkle the blood, why kill the animal? I'm glad it didn't work out. Thank you for your time. And now we're going to ready to have our announcements. Come on, Dr. Ward. Come on over here. I'm glad it didn't work out. I'm glad it didn't work out. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I'm glad it didn't work out. So glad that the animal sacrifice did not work out. But I thank God for the royal law. These commandments we live by, and we we are encouraging everyone all over the world to live by our commandments. Amen. What I love so much about that was that when he went into the commandments, when they were written in stone, they were written by God himself. So many people said Moses did those commandments. No, Moses didn't write the commandments. But God Almighty wrote the commandments. And we want to thank God for the commandments. We want to thank God for the people of God being here on today. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We want to thank God. This is the last Sabbath in this month of July 2022. I, I don't know if you all have thought about it, but maybe you have. Seems like this year is so fast. We're going into the eighth month of this year, August, and I believe August the 6th will be our Sabbath day, our first Sabbath in this, uh, in this year uh, for August. And we're asking everyone to please don't forget that we are coming into um, our feast days once again. Amen. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes. The blowing of the trumpet. Yes. The memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. It will begin Monday, September 26, 2022 at sundown. That's right. And it will end 
Tuesday, September 27th, 2022 at sundown. And uh, our services will probably be with IOG as it has been for the last um, uh, two uh, uh, feast days. And we have really enjoyed them and we have really enjoyed the service uh, with IOG. So we're looking forward and to that. And I want everybody to know that there are things about the memorial of the one of the trumpets that was never taught to us. Never taught to us. I want you to invite family, friends, loved ones never heard of the of blowing of Trump because our preachers did not teach us. And we need to know why. Because the coming of the Lord is going to be announced. And the people of God everywhere all over this world need to know about it. When, when, when uh, the Lord Jesus say, come up hither in every tongue, every language will hear those words come up hither. And you need to know this and understand it because it is going to bless you and your family all over the world. Amen? Amen. I like to say we thank God for um, our last Thursday night um, uh, group therapy, um, Bible study, and we are inviting all of EGW all over Kansas City to be present on next week. Amen. We want you all to be here at 7 p.m. on next week for group therapy. Also, we thank God for um, Sister Cordelia Walker and her beautiful daughter. They will be our guest speakers for the Sister Circle session in August. And you're going to hear a whole lot about that during August. And we thank God for that. Also today, pastor is coming. He is going to bless the people of God, those that are tithers and those that give their offerings for this ministry. Without your tithes and offerings, we would not be able to do what we're doing in this ministry. And I'm praying that God increase our tithes. Uh-oh. So somebody catch that? Did somebody get that? That means somebody's raises on their job. Amen. Uh, that means that, hey, they come coming in from other places. Don't you know God wants to give us an increase? And he won't give us that increase unless we ask for it. He said, ask and it shall be what? Given. So I'm asking God for an increase. I'm asking God for my now, today, I want you to ask God for your increase on, uh, on today in your tithes and in your offerings. God bless you, Pastor. We bless you. I'm glad to uh, be able to once again say happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. All right. Now, all that have your offering and all that have your tithe. I want you to go ahead and understand this about your tithe. Your tithe is something that is commanded. And we know we ought to obey God and fear God, keep his commandments. He commanded us to go ahead and give the tithe. The reason why he gave, gave you that commandment is so you can always have something to go ahead and grow more. You got to be able to grow more. Look here. You give your tithe, you going to grow more. And let me let you know something. Think about corn. One kernel can bring up a whole stock. That, that small amount of 10% can give you increase that you can you can not, not even think about. You cannot receive. Okay? That is what that tithe is. All right. And your offering, let me go ahead and let you know something. It's a free will thing. But you want some doors open, don't you? 
You want some doors open in your life. You want some. You 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 need to have a breakthrough. Oh, that opens the door for you. Give unto your God. And guess what? It's going to be given back to you. Uh, What's it? Press down. Press down. Press down. Shaking. Running over. Shall men give unto, unto your bosom. All right. Ty, let's just go ahead and throw your hands in there with your time. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just thank you. Lord God, we thank you for you being the God that you are. God, you are God to keep your promise. We just read that you kept your promise even to Abraham. Lord God, because you are a God that keeps promises, Lord God, we are expecting for you to keep a promise uh, that you gave to us. You said if we bring our tithe to the storehouse, you will open up a window into heaven and that window is going to pour us out a blessing. Here it is that we cannot receive room enough to receive. Now, God, we putting you on the spot. Lord God, we thank you for this seed. Lord God, this seed that we're planting, Lord God. Lord God, allow for this seed not to just be planted in this ministry. But God, we're planting in our lives. Lord God, we're planting in our household. Lord God, we're planting in our our business adventure. Lord God, we're planting in our family, Lord God. And Lord God, we just thank you for the increase. The increase of what, God? The increase of peace. The increase of tranquility, Lord God. Oh, here it is. The increase of deliverance, Lord God. Healing, Lord God. We are planting so we might be able to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. We have three ways to give. You can go ahead and give on our, our online platforms. You can also give to our cash app, which is uh, the dollar sign, GW Bible. All right. You can go to our secured website, which is www.experiencinggodministries.com. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see the button called Donate. Punch that button. Guess what? They even have a feature on there where you can have recurring donations. Okay. If you want it just to come out, you know, no, uh, out of sight, out of mind. It can go ahead and happen that way. And the third way is you can come on up to the house and put it, uh, put it in the hand of the preacher. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, with that being said, we have any more announcements. Okay. All right. The sixth chapter of Matthew. Let's go here. And get dismissed. Ahead. Let's face Jerusalem. Everyone stand and face Jerusalem as we get ready to, to uh, dismiss. Now, while we face Jerusalem, the book said that his eyes and his heart will always be on that place. Why not follow those instructions? All right. I want God's eyes to be there. I want God to hear, see my prayer, hear my prayer. I want him to accept my prayer. How about that? Go ahead. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, For thine is the kingdom and, the power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.